welcome to Wise Guys. Uh, today we're going to be solving equations and working on some questions and answers. So when you're solving equations, you need to be paying attention to some different things. One of them is using the distributive law to remove brackets. And if you're not sure how to use the distributive law, there is a video on working with brackets. You have to be able to combine your like terms, and again, the video on addition of algebraic expressions will help you with that. You have to perform the same operations on both sides to find the unknown, and the original video, the earlier video on isolating the variable talks about that. And again, it's always a good idea to check your answer in the original equation because sometimes we can make mistakes and it's always nice to know that our answer is correct, especially when we're in a, in a test. Now, I'm just going to work on some questions here. We have 3x plus 4x, so we're going to add these two like terms. The 3 plus the 4 add together, we end up with 7x. That equals minus 9. Now again, the whole point of working on this equation is to solve for x. 7 is multiplied by x, so we divide by 7 on the left side. Make sure to go over to the right side, divide by 7. These two cancel, and we're left with x equals minus 9 over 7. So now we have, unfortunately, a kind of a funny answer. But I'm just going to plug that answer back into the original equation and see if it's correct. So 3x plus 4x equals minus 9. So we have 3 times minus 9 over 7 plus 4 times minus 9 over 7 equals minus 9. We have 7 in the denominator here, and I really just want to get that 7 out of there, because it's just kind of a nuisance, actually. So I'm going to multiply the right side of this equation. I'm going to multiply this piece, this term, by 7, so my 7s will cancel. And I'm going to multiply this term by 7 as well, so these 7s will cancel. If I multiply this term by 7, and if I multiply this term by 7, I must multiply my minus 9 by 7. So here my 7s cancel, here my 7s cancel, and I'm left with 3 times minus 9, which is minus 27. Here I'm left with 4 times minus 9, which is minus 36. And minus 9 times 7 is minus 63. And fortunately, minus 27 and minus 36 add up to minus 63, so we have the correct answer. And again, when you're working with uh, stuff that sort of seems a little complicated like this, just slow it down, take your time through it, remember how to work with fractions, that sort of thing. Now here we have 6t minus 5 equals minus 2t. We need to get our t's together. So I am going to add 2t to the right side and add it to the left side. So I have 6t minus 5 plus 2t equals minus 2t plus 2t. So again, I'm thinking to myself, I'm adding the 2t here on the right-hand side, and I'm adding the 2t on the left-hand side. Here, we have 6t plus 2t, which is 8t. And we still have our minus 5. The minus 2t and the plus 2t give us 0. Now, we need to get this minus 5 over to the right-hand side. So what we're going to do is add 5 on the left, and we'll add 5 on the right. These two cancel, and we're left with 8t equals plus 5. 
Now again, we're just trying to solve for t. So I'm going to divide the left by 8. I'm going to divide the right by 8. These two cancel. And I'm left with t equals 5 over 8. This question, I'm not going to check the answer, but you can certainly check the answer and make sure that it works. In this question, we have 6 divided by r equals minus 4r plus 1. Now again, we have two r's here, and we have to get them together. All right. Uh, usually, I think about what's, what's the biggest problem I have to deal with, and I try to deal with that first. So the thing I want to get rid of is my 6. So I'm going to multiply the left side by 6, and I will multiply the entire right side by 6. Now it's very important to stop and think about that. When you're multiplying on the left side and you have a large quantity on the right side that you have to multiply that number by, you're multiplying the whole thing by the 6. All right. So it's important to put your brackets in. On the left my 6's cancel and I'm left with r equals minus 4r plus 1 times 6. Now at this point we're going to use the distributive principle to multiply that 6 with the minus 4r and with the 1. So we have r equals, so the 6 is multiplied by the minus 4r, that gives me minus 24r. Then we add it to the 6 multiplied by the 1 which gives us 6. Now at this point, again, we still need to get these r's on the same side. So I need to take this minus 24r and move it over to the left. So I subtract, I, sorry, I add it to the left side, so plus 24r, and I add it, sorry, I add it to the right side and I add it to the left side. Minus 24r plus 24r gives me 0. So on the left, I have r plus 24r equals 6. r plus 24r is 25r, because there's a 1 in front of this r. So 25r equals 6. I'm going to divide by 25 on the left. I have to divide by 25 on the right. These two cancel, and I'm left with r equals 6 divided by 25. So let's just check this one. This one looks like a little bit crazier question, and it might seem like it's a little difficult to check. r over 6 equals minus 4r plus 1. Remember, r is 6 divided by 25. So on the top here, we write 6 divided by 25 divided by 6 equals minus 4 times 6 divided by 25 plus 1. Now here, we have a fraction essentially divided by a fraction. So when we have fractions divided by fractions, we flip the bottom number. So this becomes 6 over 1. We have a fraction over a fraction. So on the left side, this is actually 6 over 25 times this bottom number flips and becomes multiplied by the 6 over 25. So now we have 6 divided by 25 times 1 over 6. And as you can see, what we did was take the denominator and flip it, turn it up, and multiply it by the top number. <coughs> Here we have minus 4 times 6, which is minus 24, divided by 25, plus 1. 1, if we have... you. If we uh, talk about it as having a denominator as 25, it's actually 25 divided by 25. 
Now, 6 times 1 divided by 25 times 6, with this equation here, we can just get rid of our 6s. So this becomes 1 over 25 equals minus 24 over 25 plus 25 over 25. When we're adding fractions, all we do is add the uh, numerators. So minus 24 plus 25 gives us a 1, and our denominator stays the same as 25. So then you can see that this answer is correct as well. Thank goodness, because it was a hard one. And here's our last question. Here again, we have to work with the distributive principle. We have 2 times r minus 3, so we take our 2 and multiply it by the r and add it to the 2 multiplied by the minus 3. So this becomes 2r and 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 equals 5r plus 2. Now again, we have to combine our r's. So I'm going to subtract 5r from the left, and I will subtract 5r from the right. These two cancel, and I'm left with 2r minus 5r minus 6 on the left, and that equals 2. These two combine and give me minus 3r. Minus 3r minus 6 equals 2. Now usually I don't like to have a minus, minus number in front of the, the, um, the variable that I'm looking for, but I wasn't really, um, in this case we're not going to worry about it, we're just going to continue with the calculation. So we have minus 3r, want to move the minus 6 over, we want to get rid of the minus 6, so we're going to add 6 to the left hand side, and we have to add 6 to the right-hand side. These two cancel. We end up with minus 3 equals 2 plus 6, which is 8. Now we have minus 3 multiplied by r. We want to get r by itself. So we're going to divide by minus 3 on the left, and I divide by minus 3 on the right. These two cancel, and I'm left with r equals 8 divided by, oh, sorry, 8 divided by minus 3, which we can write as minus 8 over 3. <clears throat> and that is solving equations. I hope you have a good day.